Alright, you all welcome. In this video, I'll be teaching you all how I set up my 3D models in Chidu Box so that I can export it out onto my 3D printer. I have an Elegoo Mars Pro. So we are going to first find a uh, 3D model that we like on like a website or if you're a graphic designer you can design your own 3D uh, model that you can then uh, slice up and export through Cheeto Box. And this is a free program. I'll have a link in the description if anybody wants to download Cheeto Box. And uh, I also have a link in the description to the 3D printer that I use. I use a resin 3D printer. There's a few different types of 3D printers, but my personal favorite is my resin 3D printer. Alright, so I am going to just upload the file that I previously downloaded from a website called myminifactory.com. It has loads of different uh, 3D models that you can download for either paid or free. So I'm going to hit these three lines in the corner and then go down to open. And then we are able to open up open up my Thanos bus so now we have a large bus on our little plane right here so first off what we see are a whole bunch of blue and red portions of this bus all the red that you see will be out of the range for your 3d printer to print and uh, to actually set up for the plane to be specific for your printer, we're gonna hit settings over here on the corner. And under settings, you are able to add a profile. If we add a new profile, we are able to pick what type of machine, what type of, how much resin, prints. It gives us all the information that we need to add and it will be specific for our printer so once you have added a new printer you get to pick which printer you have I have an Elegoo Elegoo Mars Pro and then I'm gonna hit OK but right now I'm not gonna hit OK but in your instance you would hit OK then it will give you all of your information about your printer and the building uh, space will be specific dimensions for your printer. So back to our 3D model, if you look here to navigate through, if you right click, you are able to have your 3D model in a set space and you can rotate around it. If you left click, you are able to move it side to side, up and down, but if you click your uh, scroll wheel down, you are also able to move around. So I'm going to just get this right in the middle of our screen and what we need to do is try to get this bus scaled down and positioned in a way where we are able to have everything in blue. We don't want to see any red because red means it's not going to print. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down. So over here you're going to see four different buttons. Move, rotate, scale, and mirror. So what we want to do is we're going to hit scale. We're going to lock our ratios. So if you see a white box right here, click it. And whatever we edit over uh, any of these will be locked in ratios. So if we edit X, Y, and Z will uh, move accordingly for how much you move X for. So we're going to lower our X down a couple and if you see our Y and our Z are moving as well. So we just scale him down until we have no red left. So right here I have a little bit of red and what you can do to fine tune that is either go in here and type out how much you want it to go down in percent or in millimeters or you can hit scale to fit right here and scale to fit will just scale it down to perfectly fit at the maximum amount and in its position 
inside of your building area. So once you have scaled it, everything you're good, you see it's going to fit, you see it's going to print, you don't see any red marks. Then now we're going to check to see if the model is truly all the way down. So the way you can do that is if you look at the bottom and if it's green, that means it's on the bottom of the build plate. This is what will be built up. So imagine this on a 3D printer. Normally 3D, uh, resin 3D printers are upside down. So it goes down into the resin vat and it's going to build from bottom to top. So this is going to be the first thing printed. We want to make sure that this is all the way down because I have gone through some projects where this isn't all the way down by just a millimeter or two and the whole print just keeps failing. It will not print because that first layer has nothing to print. So now that we have this scaled, we now need to determine if we want this thing to be solid or if we want it to be hollow. I normally like my buses and my different figures to be solid because I like it to have some weight and I normally buy resin in big batches so I have enough resin to spare. But for some people who may not have uh, as much resin, you are able to hollow it out to save on resin. So up here you'll see a couple buttons. So we're, we see repair, we see dig hole, and then we see hollow. So what we want to do is click hollow we want to make sure inner is uh, clicked and this uh, wall thickness will determine how thick the walls will be. I personally liked 1.5 millimeter but if you have a more detailed model or smaller pieces you might want to lower your thickness. And once that happens you're just going to hit start and what will happen now is our whole model will go through this hollowing phase where it's going to re-render but it's just going to have a 1.5 millimeter thickness all around and once we have done this now we need to build a hole for excess resin to escape out the middle so we're going to keep the hole we're not going to dig continuously because we don't want it to go all the way through. We're going to have our whole circle and here's the dimensions that we can pick. And then we're going to hit add hole. And once we do that, then we get this little block where we can add the hole. So right now, this little block, green block right now, is way too big. We don't want our hole to be that big. So we're going to bump down this size by a lot. So now, the hole is a decent size, still a little too big. We'll hit it down to three. And we're going to just put this right here at the back. And then once we do that, if it's not in an area that's thick enough, it's going to fail. All right, so once we have hollowed out our model, what we need to do is make sure that our size is of a good uh, size, but our depth needs to be a little thicker than the thickness of the walls of the model, or it will fail. So we're going to add a hole and we're going to put our hole right here at the base of his head. Boom. And what will happen is now a small hole will appear where we click the button and the piece that the hole made I have being printed on the side of the build plate right here just in case hey I may want to put that piece back right here, glue it in, buff it out, so this would be good. But once you make that one hole right here, you also should add a hole down here for air to go through. So now we have two holes, one for air to go through and one for air to go out along with the resin. And once we are happy with that, now we need to de determine if 
our model needs supports. So what are supports? Supports are uh, extra resin that is built up from the bottom of the plate that holds on to certain parts of our model while it's being built so it has support to be built on. So just in case you have like an arm standing out or a finger up or a staff being held up, supports will help those things stay up in place while everything is being built so it doesn't either get squished, break off, or not even print in which all of those have happened to me before. So to get to the supports area, we're going to look to the right right here where we see three lines and a box being held up by these three lines. We're going to click that and that is our supports tab. And what will happen is now that we've clicked our supports tab, this little uh, bat of uh, resin has now appeared on the bottom and now our model is just slightly lifted off of the build plate. That is so it has enough space for supports to go under here. And if you look, now it's red. That means it's not on the build plate. So what we need to do is we need to determine if we want light supports, medium supports, or heavy supports. I personally stick with either medium or heavy supports. Light supports really don't do anything in my opinion really to help support anything because one they're too small so right here you get to determine uh, the different shapes diameters depths of your supports I'm going to stick with my heavies and also you get to determine the density the angle all of the good stuff for your supports you get to either put it on your platform or you can add it all over and where you see these little dots that's where supports are going to automatically be generated but if you don't want all these supports to automatically be generated right underneath are three buttons add support delete support and edit support so you are able to add your own supports wherever you see that they are needed so I'm just going to add my supports underneath my platform So I'm just going to add my supports manually in a few places for my bus to print out nicely so I am able to get it off the build plate a little easier because it's a lot easier to snap off a few of these supports than to try to scrape off this whole thing without damaging something else. So once I am comfortable with the amount of supports that I've added. I may see a support that just is way too close to another one. So I'm going to click my delete and we're going to delete this one. And if you see, it's highlighted and we're just going to hit our enter. So once we click our support, we are just going to hit delete and our support is deleted. So once we have finished that, we're going to go back over to our settings tab. We're going to review our model, make sure it looks good, make sure that these are on the build plate. And then over here on the side, we're going to hit our slice. And this is going to slice up and process this whole model to be built in a version of uh, code that allows the 3D printer to read every layer. So it's going to slice it up into layers. And if you see down here, it's slicing. And that does take a few minutes depending on how fast your computer is and it can slice the 3D models. And over here on the side, you are given a whole bunch of information about the uh, 3D model just in case you want to resell it. You know your price points, your weights, your volumes, uh, 
and the time it'll take for the 3D printer to uh, print out the model. So for me, it's going to cost $1.16 worth of resin to create, and it's going to take 3 minutes and 11 seconds for this model to be uh, printed. And here are the specific timings that we will want to do. But if we want to change a timing, like I like to use 60, it'll update accordingly. And then we just save our project. Save. And it'll start writing the file. And then we can add it to our flash drive and start printing it. So I hope you all enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them down uh, as a comment. Uh, but if you like this video, like, subscribe, and look out for more videos just like this. I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.